while we're looking for God to do something, our, our emphasis is, Lord, we want you to do something. God's emphasis is, I'm looking for someone I can trust with what I'm already doing, who won't abuse it, won't take it for themselves. And so I asked the Lord last night, like we in the wee hours, when I asked the Lord about what I would preach today, and I said, now here it comes. How do we not abuse this? How do we not waste this? How do we not turn this into one more thing we talk about in the past tense instead of having a nuclear reactor that just keeps growing and growing and growing? How many of you are with me on that? You don't want this to be four nights and that's it. This is it. We need the devil to understand that we are not here to win a few souls. We are here to tell you, pack up and get out. Clap for Jesus right now. Pack up and get out. So how do we do it? Here's the answer. I began to revisit how Paul the Apostle described the word love. It's different than what you think. I began to look at the word love. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14, it's like God is dropping it on us this morning and saying, this is what you and the people in the tent need to know. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul describes how and why God gives spiritual gifts to Christians. In Matthew 10, he sat them down, gave them the power to heal all sickness and manner, all manner of disease. It was a gift. We don't remember any extended suffering that the disciples did before Matthew 10 when he imparted this power to heal the sick. So to God, he's saying this to you right now. The healing power, it's not a big deal. The humility during the flow of power, that's the whole deal. It isn't a big thing for me to empty a wheelchair. It's a big thing when the media puts a microphone under your mouth and you hesitate for even an iota to understand I have no healing power. I cannot heal anyone. I have no nail print. I have no wound in my side. I did not die on a cross. This man walked today. This is what Peter said to them in Acts 4. If we're called into question as to the result of the miracle, be it known to all of you that it is by Jesus Christ and the faith that comes through him that this man stands before you perfectly whole. Listen to me. 1 Corinthians 12 says these are the gifts and God gives them as a gift. It's not here to grow your church. It's not here for you to go to the convention of your denomination and say we have the biggest church in town. You've lost your appetite for that. That's not what you want as a man or a woman of God. You don't care about that anymore. Love is driving you. Love is driving you. And love is driving you to say it is the kingdom of God. It is to defeat evil. It is to glorify God. The prophet said in the Old Testament what should be the passion of every New Testament preacher. Who will declare his generation? Let the world know. And Mario Morello is going to say it. I'm here because of a Jesus that died on a cross. And because he died on a cross, you don't have to be perverted. You don't have to be addicted. You don't have to want to kill yourself. You can be set free by the river of healing virtue. Somebody help me right now. First Corinthians 14, Paul tells the Corinthians to desire spiritual gifts. You know what? I'm glad you want to heal the sick. I'm glad you want to empty wheelchairs and see blind eyes open. And believe me, if your heart is right, it's unavoidable. God never awakens a hunger in someone except to fulfill that hunger. There's never a moment. You know, when I, I read where Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger. I said, how is it a blessing to be starving? But he said, blessed are those who hunger. 
the hunger that's in you is a prophetic insight to your future. If God puts something in you for an orphan, there's going to be something you're going to do for children that no one in before you has ever done. If God put a passion in you for gangsters, the same thing. The hunger. If all of a sudden you can't think of anything but seeing God heal and raise up people that are diseased and sick, that hunger is a prophetic insight to your future. Blessed are you that hunger and thirst, for you shall be filled. Listen to me. It's not a blessing if that hunger is going to go unfulfilled. The only thing that makes it a blessing is the promise that says this. God made you hungry specifically so that you would see that fulfillment. Now I want you to look at me. Supernatural gifts. Chapter 12. This is what they are. This is how you get them. Chapter 14. Desire them. Since they cannot be worked for or earned, it must be received as a gift from God's Spirit. In particular, he tells them to want the gift of prophecy. He said, of and 14 comes something that we need today. The right motive. That's what God's looking for. Can I trust you with a great ministry? Can I trust you with a, with a tremendous vision or a, a plan? Can I give you an idea that isn't going to end up in your carnality? Can I do something through you that you will absolutely erase your own needs and just get it done for my glory? Just for me. And there's only one way. And that's why he threw 1 Corinthians 13 right in the middle. Because he said, without what I'm about to describe, the supernatural will always fail. It'll fail. You'll be one more evangelist that ended up in immorality. You'll be one more angry preacher that grind an axe against the church but didn't leave anything meaningful. Is anybody getting anything out of what I'm saying right now? Does what I say make sense to your heart? Supernatural gifts rise and fall on the motives of the gifted. I didn't know this. The Bible says the spirit of the gift of prophecy is subject to the prophet. I thought, how could a supernatural gift be that fragile? Here's what it's trying to say. Supernatural gifts rise and fall on the motives of the gifted. What do you think I do? I'm going to tell you what I do. I read books. I read the Bible more than anything else, but I read books. And you know, reading is taking a hit. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason that Satan wants our young people to constantly look at images and not printed letters. Because in them, you find embedded all of the reasons we have failed in the past. We don't know about what happened, how that Evan Roberts faced incredible temptation. What did he do with it? I needed to know. It was only after God said, Mario Murillo, I'm going to give you a ministry. I'm going to let you influence millions of people. It was only after that that it dawned on me, I better read history. I better find out. I better know. I better see for myself what went wrong. And I don't want the four days in this city to be another has-been, another imbalance, another near-miss, another fixation, another pet doctrine. We've had all of that. I'm sick of all of that. What I want is a Christ-centered move of God that grows and that grows, help me, now, and grows and grows and grows because God is in the middle of it. Love is the only thing that makes the supernatural effective. It can be dazzling. It can be famous. It can be awe-inspiring. 
but it will never be effective without love. I need a loud amen. 